Hi everybody, this is your girl Tasha, and I'm here again with some more tea. My teacup is brewing. This is a very interesting story, and for some of my trans sisters, I kind of like to see what you guys think, of you girls, well you know what I mean, you girls think about it. It's a story about Two, it's a real story. Two transgender teenagers, they're in high school. Two transgender girls, and they're on the track team, girls' track team. And now it's all this, all this um, commotion about them being transgender women on the track team. And I just want to see if you guys can hear what they're talking about. It was on GMA. And I just want to kind of hear if you guys hear what they're saying. And then I have my opinion. Okay, let me see if I can get it. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. Here we go, I think. <laughs> Oh my God! If Vic is, it would start acting stupid. Oh. All right, she's so brave. Okay. Here we go. And we're gonna turn now to a GMA exclusive. Two transgender high school runners. Well, they're kicking up dust in Connecticut, taking the top spots at the state girls championship, leaving parents wondering if they have an unfair advantage. Lindsay Davis is here, and you sat down with the track star to talk all about. And that's right, Michael. We're talking about a subject that's so sensitive that Andrea and Terry, who you're about to meet, felt when it was time to tell their parents that they're transgender, they each revealed it by text, and now they have gone public with it, and they're facing they opposition from people who say, even though you may feel like a girl, you need to compete against the boys. You hear that? Terry Miller and Andrea Yearwood dominating the competition at the Girls Track and Field Championships in Connecticut earlier this month. <laughs> Coming in first and second place, respectively. And while it was a state race, their wins are making national headlines. Not because of what they did, but because of who they are. Two transgender girls. When was the first time that either of you found any kind of opposition to you participating on the girls team? I was expecting it. So every day I go home, search up track and field high school. Her name is Terry Miller, speaking now. Some of those comments were harsh. Critics complaining that Andrea and Terry both have an unfair advantage since they were born boys. At what point do you decide, actually, it's more appropriate for me to be on the girls' team and competing with other girls? I decided that the summer before ninth grade. They've both started hormone therapy and say that for the most part, they've been welcomed by friends, family, coaches, and administrators with open arms. But there is some backlash from parents and students. Two petitions were even started in an attempt to change the current rule of the state's governing body of interscholastic sports. The rule states that students are entitled to participate on a team based on their gender identity, how they identify. The girls athletes are at the physical disadvantage compared to the transgender female. Bianca Stinescu started one of those petitions after her daughter Selena lost to Andrea and Terry at a track meet in May. They have naturally testosterone within their body that has been proven to give a physical advantage in sports. The mom, who was unaware that the girls were already undergoing hormone therapy, has gotten a little over 100 signatures. Medical science tells us that estrogen hormone therapy does change the body, replacing some lean muscle with fat. But of course, everyone is different. Andrea's parents say what's most important to them is the well-being of their child. Track is number 100 on my list of concerns as a this father. This is the father. I'm changing the daughter. I'm talking and about raising a child for African life. American. And so is it fair that that child is excluded? 
is it fair that child doesn't feel like they have a place to belong? It allows her to be who she wants to be, and I think that has a little bit more and weight that's a than mother. just winning a medal. The rules vary from state to state. In seven states, including Texas, students must play on the team that matches their birth certificate, or have undergone surgery, or have had extended hormone therapy, while the NCAA requires the completion of one year of testosterone suppression. Medical research cannot really identify the line where a competitive advantage might exist for trans athletes of either gender. What do you want to say to other transgender youth, young people, teens who are out there really struggling through this process? Just follow your heart. I don't let other people determine what you do in life. Let's just play devil's advocate for a moment and just imagine that you were both born girls and then all of a sudden you had uh, two boys who identified as being girls and they said, hey, we're going to be on your team and maybe now you're not performing as well because they are better. So I'm not going to discourage you or try to say, oh, it's not fair. And it was just pushed me to run faster. I'd be happy for them because they get to do what they want. They're happy, so that should in turn make me happy. And they're brave. They're just different from everybody. And just to be clear, the mother who started the petition says that she would like to see the girls sit out for a year after hormone therapy before competing with other girls. And this is start, certainly sparking a lot of debate. And it's something that schools across the country are dealing with because an estimated 150,000 teens in this country identify as transgender. And you know, it's a very interesting argument on both sides. You can see compelling argument on both. Definitely. Thank you so much, Lindsay. We're going to go. Now, did you hear that? There's estimated 150,000 transgender teenagers. And, I mean, really, they're girls. They're taking hormones. They've been on hormones. And they're in Connecticut. And Connecticut allows you to identify with the gender you feel you are. Not all states, but Connecticut, and that's where they're at, allows you to identify with the gender you feel you are. Some, it's what you were born, and you have, unless you've had surgeries and things of that nature to compete with on the women's team. Now, in my opinion, I was watching it. There are two high school girls. They're on hormones. Just because they beat two biological, since gender women, biological women, it's a problem. And this mother, for, for a foreigner, who she should be more, she should be more compassionate because. Her ass is from out of this country, and you know how they don't want foreigners in here now. So you would think she would be less discriminatory. But she's being discriminated, talking about upset because the other transgender girls beat her daughter. So she's getting her little petition and less than 100 parents signed. Of course, you know she got a bunch of foo-foo started. And all of that nonsense. Oh, bitch, get out of my face playing. But the point is, these are teenage girls. They've been on hormones. And then for them to sit and talk about they should sit out for a year just to let the hormones soak. They just said they're on hormones. That's just an excuse for them to sit out and be discriminated. When I heard that story on GMA, I had to tape it. I had to discuss it with my trans girls and trans women because these are about teenagers, but we're all in the same boat with trans women. And I just, I just hope that you guys heard that because it really pissed me off. These are teenage transgender girls running track and they're very good and they won. And some of the parents are upset because 
the transgender girls have come in first and second and have beaten their daughters. I say get the fuck over it. Okay? They're women. Get the hell over it. They're young teenage girls. Okay? They're not grown women yet, but they're young teenage girls. So you heard that. I hope you heard it. And my opinion is screw it. They're teenage girls and they should run their asses off, run all the way to Maine, okay? They're in Connecticut. Run all the way to Maine and be the best you can be. And I'm so, and one last thing before I go, I'm so proud that they were black, they were finally showing Afro-American parents supporting their children. It was so wonderful. The mother and the father, they were both Afro-American, and, and that's rare. Let's be realistic. That is so rare. And I was so touched to see the father, especially an Afro-American father, and the mother supporting their child, saying that all they wanted was to make their child their child to be happy and healthy. And by the way, the children and their, their teenage daughters text them that they were transgender. But I'm going to shut my mouth. You all got the gist of the story. Let's comment, like, share, and whatever. It's a conversation that, you know, it's a good, great conversation that we need to have. So that's it. Love you all until my next video. Talk to you later. Bye.